Well, welcome everybody to our podcast series, Game Changers in Higher Education. Uh, today, our guest is Jeff Yon, and Jeff is the uh, Executive Director of Eagle Dining Services uh, at Georgia Southern University in Statesboro, Georgia. And uh, Jeff just reminded me that it's the only Statesboro in, I guess, the United States, Jeff, North America. That, that's correct. The world, I guess. I'm, and uh, my name is David Porter. I'm the CEO and President of Porter Cock Consulting. Uh, we're a food service management consulting and design firm. Uh, so today uh, we're going to talk to Jeff. Uh, we, we call this Game Changers in Higher Ed. And the criteria we use for Game Changers are individuals with vision, uh, with courage, and with commitment. Those that have the uh, kind of the courage of their convictions to move forward with really making some profound changes or evolving their dining programs in ways that really put students first and can really ultimately transform the college experience and uh, really, uh, in many ways, uh, go far beyond just dining, per se, and how it affects campus life, how the campus recruits, retains, and graduates students. But today we want to talk to Jeff about uh, the past six years where we've had the uh, opportunity to work with him and Eddie Mills and the rest of the team there at Georgia Southern. Uh, six years ago, we were brought on campus by Jeff and Eddie to develop a campus-wide dining master plan, where really the goal was to determine the future of residential dining on, on campus. The campus had grown significantly over the previous 15 years, geographically as well as with enrollment. A lot of new construction. They had a dining hall, their primary dining hall, that really uh, looked like a, a, a very old, dated venue on a corner of an intersection, really surrounded by all this beautiful new construction with housing and, and classroom buildings and other buildings. But what was the future? Should that be demolished and the campus should be all retail? Or was there another approach to residential dining? So, uh, Jeff, I want to uh, thank you for joining us. And really, if you can share with us, you know, kind of what it was like a little bit when uh, before this transition took place, you know, what, what the process was during the transition, and really a lot of the success that you've enjoyed as you've led the department over the past uh, five years since these new buildings have been constructed on your campus. Sure. Thanks, David. Well, first of all, you know, when we initially brought you and your team to campus, I think the thought was just get rid of the old ugly building. <laughs> I don't know that truthfully that our thoughts were as expansive as they should have been at the time, and that's thinking of the campus needs as a whole and and the student dining needs. It was more so just get rid of the building, uh, give us a pretty new facility like so many of our colleagues throughout the country were getting. Mm -hmm. But David, you will remember you and your team came and said, no, we need, to, we need to think through this. We need to identify through the focus groups and through the evaluation process what the campus really wants, not just what you're hearing, but what they're really doing um, as well as to, to agree with what they're saying. So ultimately, we identified that and we were fortunate enough to create the two new facilities that we have, the two new dining pieces. You know, you mentioned the retail piece, and it was, our retail piece was very successful, it still is, but it certainly couldn't sustain uh, the dining population that we had. So with the new facilities, the new uh, dining halls, as well as the new program, we've been able to not only um, take care of the students, their dining needs, but offer a complete setting for, you know, what I refer to as education outside of the classroom. Mm -hmm. I often, you know, when I'm, when we are a, a part of the recruiting process, whether it be campus open houses or recruiting events, you know, I often tell students and, or prospective students and their parents that that's what it is. It's not just a place to get nourishment, to get food, but it's, you know, a place where you'll socialize, where you'll, where you will study, where you really will have that education outside the classroom. And, and I think more and more we're seeing that transpire. We're seeing that value be brought forth to our campus. Right. So actually, so just to kind of set the table a little bit for those that are viewing us today and listening, we recommended really a little bit at odds with what the convention was when we were talking to administrators and all access or anytime dining or an all access type program in a newly renovated land room, which really would become the heartbeat, the heart and soul of the campus. And I remember you had mentioned to me, you know, David, there's really, we have lots of venues on campus and they're very successful. And you brought me to many of them, the retail, but 
it was really no common place for the students to really come together kind of in a critical mass type way socially for or to, to dine, you know, whether they were resident students or non-resident students. So uh, most of the administrators that we talked to were really of the mind that, boy, we really need more retail, you know, more uh, kind of brands like you'd see in Atlanta or the Panera type brands or the Chipotle type brands, which are all great. And I think you have one of the most successful Chick-fil-A's in the country on your campus. Uh, but we recommended that all access program in that one location. I think we started with about 1,800 seats, and I know that ended up being closer to 1,200 seats. Is that right, Jeff? 11. 11. So uh, tell us a little bit about the all access program in Landrum, uh, kind of the order of magnitude of that project in Landrum, and how your students have reacted to that your resident students, but also your non-resident students in terms of how they use the venue? Well, it's interesting that you bring up the administration because so many of those people that, and, and in their uh, defense, that's what they were hearing from our students. They were hearing that, that they needed, we needed more retail and a more variety of retail choices, and they were seeing how successful our retail choices were. So, you know, naturally that's how they should react in support of the students. But it's interesting that so many of them frequent now our dining locations and enjoyed them with our many students that are enjoying them. So that's that's pretty interesting, and and they're very proud to bring whether it be um, you know prospective students as I mentioned before, or or other administrators or local officials into our facilities. So it's been well received by our students, most definitely, but by our faculty and our staff and our administration. So everyone now, and it really has the community feel that we'd strive for, that we'd hope for. It has a feel that. You know, throughout the day, you'll you'll be, you'll see students coming just to gather, and not necessarily eating. Really? Certainly, they do that, but they come to to be with friends. And the all access piece has allowed them to do that. Has allowed them to just come and go freely. You know, one thing that I think too that is often not spoken of enough is uh is the the taking the scheduling piece away. In other words, a a freshman coming to school, you know, freedom for the first time and you know, experiencing life on their own, so to speak, and they're able to eat when they're hungry. There's no longer a, a confined time or a confined menu with all that we're offering these new facilities. They're able to in enjoy that part of their college experience without having confinement or 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 parameters that would be restrictive. Yeah, so like like a lot of schools, and they still do it. A lot of the older quote unquote school programs might have a limited breakfast hour between 7 and 9.30 for a full breakfast, a limited full lunch hour between 11 and 1.30, a limited dinner hour before 4.30 and 8. But how are your students? So now that they have the freedom to choose when they want to come, when do you see kind of those busy periods occurring throughout the day now and into the evening? Well, each semester it changes. Um, I, I don't know how that happens. I guess we all realize that just a lot of variables influence student behavior, but uh, they realize that not everyone can, you know, it's busy. If everyone comes at 7 o'clock in the morning for breakfast or 12 o'clock for lunch or 6.30 for dinner, so they really find themselves each semester differing in when they come, but it seems to balance out throughout the day with the 1,100 seats that we have in Dining Commons or the 500 we have in Lakeside, yeah. we're never completely full. It's always very comfortable um, in both of the dining locations. Right. So how do you see students now reacting to your meal plans in terms of uh, staying on those meal plans? I mean, I know you have a mandatory requirement for freshmen, but mm -hmm. do you find that more students are voluntarily purchasing meal plans and participating and using that uh, that that privilege, I guess, associated with the meal plan in Landrum and Lakeside. Are there more non-resident students doing that? There are. This, I, I must admit, for the first year or two, and this is the completion of our third full year in the two new facilities with the new program, there were some challenges, no doubt. Um, many of the students, were they just didn't completely buy into the transition to the all-access. They wanted the specifics that allowed them to use retail and and the way it used to be, but now we're seeing so many of the students that have experienced it in the past two years as freshmen the, with the requirement coming back to us. We just recently completed a, a real marketing push to our upperclassmen, kind of an appreciation 
where we uh, offered a discount price into those upperclassmen and said, look, we want to thank you for, you know, for being with us and for enjoying our new facilities, our new program. And we had quite a few um, of our upperclassmen going back to the dining program because they realized that it does offer, you know, so much and, and so much not just choices but convenience for their college lifestyle. And many of those are off-campus students. It's interesting you say that because uh, recently we were talking to one of our colleagues, uh, Dave May of University of New Hampshire, and he said exactly what you just said, that those uh, students that were freshmen then became sophomore in their third year is when they saw a bump in students buying voluntary meal plans once they became accustomed in kind of those first two years uh, in terms of the new program and the value associated with that. So that seems to be, you know, predictably a, a common occurrence, which is great. So now what are your hours of operation uh, in Lakeside and in Landrum? Well, dining, dining Commons Landrum, as uh, formerly referred to and so often still referred to, uh, we open at 7 a.m. and we do as, in Lakeside as well, Monday through Friday. Uh, we close at 11 p.m. Sunday through Thursday. We do close a little earlier on Friday and Saturday night. It seems to be accepted and, and no problems at all, and we close at 9 on those two nights. Lakeside's not open on the weekends. Dining Commons or Landrum seems to meet those needs for our students without any trouble on the weekends. So, uh, so Jeff, what about your numbers? What about student participation? What are you seeing now? Uh, David, we're averaging between 35 and 40,000 uh, entries between the two facilities on a weekly basis. So, obviously, our students are, uh, are enjoying the facility, no doubt. I, and I'll, I'll say this, too, David. One of the things I've been most encouraged about is in the new facilities, in the new program, we have more students eating breakfast than ever before. We do offer breakfast all day in one of our facilities, but the number of students that are getting up and eating breakfast, and I think, as we were always told when we were young, eating breakfast, how important it was, but it's great to see the students doing that. And, you know, the made-to-order the made component has been so well-received. I think the student diner has been, you know, they're exposed so much when they get to our college campuses, and our ability to, to meet their needs in the way that they, they've They've been accustomed to having eating out throughout their lives. I think that's been it's been essential, I guess, when you when you talk about you know pleasing them and certainly recruiting them, they they want to see that. Right, and and I know we've talked a lot about Landroom, which is your primary uh, dining commons, uh, so to speak. But you've also referred to Lakeside. Could you explain a little bit the, kind of what Lakeside is and the role that kind of plays with Landroom on your campus? Well, Lakeside is in the center of campus, and um, you know it's it's it, it was in existence as a dining hall before, but completely different. So when we decided to to go with the all access program, we wanted to have that that other location to meet the needs of our students that were in the center of campus or beyond, close to the other end of campus, and it's done that. We as far as as far as the building, we were constrained in expanding it because it's it is by two bodies of water and classroom buildings. But we redid it in a way that has been just, it's worked out really well. Um, it, and I say that in, in that fashion because, it, again, it was an existing building that we essentially completely redid and converted it into an all-access dining piece that has that been able to, again, meet those, those needs in that end or that side of campus. Okay. Um, while Dining Commons does have the larger piece, but uh, they both serve us well. So how do the now how do the folks in housing feel about the new dining program? Do they feel that that's a plus for students living on campus, or kind of a neutral? Uh, uh, how do they feel about it? Have they given you any? Well, very very positive. In fact, I was on the phone yesterday with one of the housing administrators, and we were talking about collaborating even more with residential education, not just again meeting those needs, but you know maybe potentially working with students to teach them how to cook. So many of them obviously we're meeting a need that we've talked about earlier, and we want to expand on their needs beyond perhaps when they're in school. So working into some educational elements with housing education, teach them how to cook and teach them lifestyle skills that, mm -hmm. um, you know, that could really advance what we're able to offer and we're able to do for them. Right. And you mentioned a couple times about, you know, recruitment. Has, have, ha, has admissions responded well to this new program in terms of how they – how the school is presented to prospective students and families or what the value of living on campus would be as it relates to this dining program? What do you hear about that? Well, I'm very preachy to our department and to our division as a whole. I, you know, as a George Southern graduate myself, 
and in fact we have 30 plus George Sun graduates in dining services that it is essential that we all understand whether it be dining or whether it be the math department any any department on campus that we all have to be about recruiting retaining and graduating that is our very existence that is our employment so it's easier to do um, when you understand that and we have absolutely been essential to admissions efforts we have you know although the growth has not been what it once was you mentioned earlier in your initial comments that we had had significant growth but we have kind of been stable the last few years but it's been we've been able to retain it and re continue to re recruit great freshman classes because I think we are focused on that and the dining facilities in the program they've helped significantly I think what we're able to offer what prospective students and their parents see when they come here is not just food uh, being provided for our students but it's an atmosphere it's an environment that does foster community and a campus um, feel that that is alive and vibrant right well, we certainly encourage everybody to come visit, at least on your website, Landrum and Lakeside, or if they can physically come and, and maybe arrange something with you. The facilities are spectacular. Uh, you mentioned administration uh, using this facility more. What about faculty and staff in particular? Do you find that faculty and staff are coming in and either buying a meal plan or paying the door rate and eating there more? Or uh, are they still continuing to maintain their old habits where they maybe they go off campus or eat in a retail location? Well, some of them, just as the students that were here prior, they were, you know, not as not necessarily as receptive as we had hoped initially. But now many of them eat with us on a regular basis. We do offer a campus rate. Uh, we anyone and everyone in our community is welcome to eat with us, but we offer a campus rate for our faculty and staff. And they seem to uh, very much appreciate that and love eating with us, and we like that. We, we like the fact that there's a, a nice balance in our dining halls, and I think it's good for our students to see them eating in, in there with them as well. Absolutely. You know, one other thing maybe you could explain to us is uh, you, you have this really kind of cutting-edge access checker mechanism. Can you explain how that works in terms of, so students on meal plans, when they come to your venue, how do they get checked in? How do they get authenticated, so to speak, that they have a meal plan? <laughs> Checks this meal. Yeah, that's it. Um, so it's an iris camera. I think, in fact, I think we were one of the first schools to use it. But yeah. our students, when they come to orientation, I have to remind the parents it's not a scanner, no detriment to their eyes, but it takes a picture of their iris and creates an algorithm. And that sounds way complex because the simplicity of it is that they take a picture of their eyes, creates an algorithm. Each time they come up, they stand there, takes a quick picture of their eyes, and they they come in the building. They gain access, Pretty and cool. it has worked really well. Now, that, the way I just described it makes it sound as if it takes a long time. It absolutely does not. It's actually quicker than them having to have a card swiped, and it also means that they don't have to have their card. And so many of our students just have a difficult time keeping up with the card. So it's cool they can just come in anytime they want to either of those two facilities with their eyes. So it really offers you that fail-safe option too with unlimited access. A student can't give their ID card to somebody else to go in and eat, right? That's correct. There's certainly a, um, a safety component there, a security <laughs> piece or a piece that doesn't, you, you can't duplicate someone's eyes or not by knowledge. Right, right, right. So uh, kind of one or two more questions, Jeff. What about the, you know, a lot of what I hear from prospective either clients or clients where we're talking about a program like what you've implemented on your campus, they're concerned with the all access, the extended hours, you know, the costs kind of getting out of control, food costs exploding, or even labor to a certain degree. But have you found that with the all access program, and clearly there are enormous benefits with student participation, their social life, board administration, recruitment, retention. But how is it kind of all shaken out, not specifics, but generally speaking, in terms of the financial performance of your department? Well, there were some real challenges the first year, um, no doubt. We had to understand our cost, our food cost, and our cost of goods overall, and then our labor. But after the first year, we were able to refine it to a place that we're actually far better than we were before. Um, I think it's just a matter of, of your staff understanding how students will dine within the program, uh, understanding their habits. And I mentioned that they vary a little bit each semester, but for the most part, there's some consistencies. 
And once our staffs, our culinary staffs, our management staffs understood those patterns and we were able to reduce waste, and we continue to find more ways to reduce waste not only with food but um, also with labor and just being efficient. I, I think it's been far better than we could have ever imagined, and it's, it's been real fun as business managers to, to reap the benefits of that, to see that um, come full circle from where it was just three short years ago. Um, but it's, it's been really effective and really efficient. That's right. Pretty spectacular. The, uh, so what would you say to administrators that are still really on the fence or somewhat skeptical about going in a direction that includes a balance of all access and retail as opposed to all retail and what the, you know, how that, um, what kind of opportunities that that presents to them? Because like you said, initially, it was a lot of thought about just tearing down Landrum and probably just doing more retail on campus because of the convention at the time. But, you know, in terms of how campus is, the campus of the future, what would you say to these folks that are a little bit on the fence about going in this direction, taking a more balanced approach? Well, I've certainly learned to appreciate the fact that every campus is different and, and, and very unique, and the student needs and the particular needs for any given campus are different. I can certainly speak for us that um, it has been far more than just an ability, and I said this earlier, for uh, of us or for us to provide food. It's created just a, it, that you mentioned earlier, that place where everyone can come and be together, mm -hmm. and, and it has maybe an old school college feel that in so many ways is perhaps diluted with technology or, or interaction, social interaction. It just seems to have provided that feel. So that's, that's been so positive. And, and, and I spe spoke of it earlier as far as a recruiting piece. I think seeing uh, how that's evolved has just, it's just been really unbelievable, I, I would say. So I guess my thought would be, you know, you have to evaluate your own, your own campus and understand the needs, but I think you sometimes have to put yourself out there and say, what I'm hearing and what I'm believing may not exactly be the same, and you have to, I guess, define the risk um, and the return potential that could exist from doing, you know, what we did. Sure, sure. It certainly has paid off in space for you, and congratulations on all your success. So, uh, so what's the future for uh, Georgia Southern Eagle Dining Services. Where do you go from here? What would you like to see? What, what's, what's next for Jeff and your program on your campus? What's your vision? Well, as with all of us in, in our dining programs throughout the country, we're always looking for what's, what's next, trying to understand the trends, trying to understand our student needs. You know, I, my hope has been all along that we would have a need for a third dining facility, and that's something that I want us to continue to talk about and look at. Uh, the more participation grows, the more there's a need for that, and I think there's a huge opportunity for that. And certainly, you know, the retail piece, we're, we're always looking for new opportunities with retail and and realize there's it's there's a need for a nice balance yep. um, to meet all of our students' needs. And I think that's the fun thing about it is we do have so much diversity on our on our college campuses, and that, that offers a lot of fun for not only the students and the faculty and staff that participate, but our staffs that man these and run these and oversee these operations. It allows us to continue to, to push them to the next level, and, and that's a lot of fun. I think that's what makes it so, so such a cool environment to work in and provide for. Well, great. Well, thanks, Jeff, for joining us today. And uh, again, you're, I have a lot of respect for your, for your accomplishments over the past six years on campus, your leadership, and where you've taken the program, and clearly where it's going. And uh, anybody who would like some more information about Jeff's program can certainly call, contact Jeff directly or contact uh, me uh, here or Josh Lazarus here in my office. And uh, I want to thank everybody for viewing our podcast today. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, David.